Hey, what is going on guys? Today we are taking a look at the biggest of Thick Boy Master Grade model kits, the Gundam Virtue. Yes, finally getting around to reviewing this here for you guys in today's episode. Let's go ahead and waste no more time and get right into the review. Starting off taking a look at this massive box, so you got the Virtue on there and just tons of effects going on on this box, so it looks fantastic. So it's firing its gigantic GN cannon there. You can see the Nadle also in the background as that's something that you can of course make by just removing all the Virtue's armor. You also got the Curios making a little guest appearance there in the back as well and just again it's just filled with all of these little GN particle effects all over the place, so it's just some very epic looking box art there. On the bottom of the box we got to look at what the Gundam is going to look like when it's all built and painted up there in just a regular standing pose. And then over here just showing an exploding armor version of that. Of course it's not something that you can make just right out of the box unfortunately, but that said there is a third party set that's coming out that is going to allow you to do that. But then on this side there's your front and back view of the Nadle with its weapons and accessories as well. What says code up there, I'm guessing that's supposed to say cord, just a little bit of a mistranslation to the English spelling. And on the top of the box here we got a look at the GN Bazooka, the GN Field, some of the different accessories and gimmicks of the kit both as the Virtue or as the Nadle there. It also includes some of your accessories as I mentioned for the Nadle, the beam rifle, the shield for that as well which is very nice. So lots of things that you can do with this kit it looks like. Some great articulation in there as well with the Nadle especially. Some different pilot figures we have included and the GN Drive of course lights up. All that good stuff that you would expect from a 00 Master Grade kit. So we'll go ahead and open the box here. As you can see, we've got a lot of runners with this very big box. And here's a look at our instruction manual. So you got the same box art there on the front. On the back side, again, just the same kind of stuff that we saw on the outside of the box, front and back pictures of the kits themselves, the accessories. We got our painting guide here as well for the kit and for the pilot figures. On the inside pages here, fights on, documentary photograph. There's a bunch of information in here in Japanese and in English, so you can check that out if you want to read a little bit more about the Gundam. Another page is some more information about the accessories, the GM Bazooka, the GN Field, the GN Cannons, and the GN Beam Rifle, GN Shields, GN Sabers, all that kind of stuff. On the front inside page here we've got some more information as well as some very nice line art of the Virtue and of the Nadle which is great if you guys want to scan that into your computer or something you can try out some custom color schemes. We've also got some information down at the bottom about Tierra Air just so you can read about that. Then we've got our parts list of course and there's a few X's on there. Those are probably just going to be from some reused inner frame runners. The rest of the manual just going to be going through the construction. It looks like you're building the Nadle up all at first and then adding all the Virtue armor onto that and you got your weapons, accessories, and marking guide here at the very back page where all the sticker markings are going to be placed on the kit. And speaking of stickers, here's a look at the foil stickers. Just a few ones there for cameras, eyes, and inside the GN drives. Then we've got our sticker decal sheet, which is a lot more extensive. You've got a lot of white and gray on there, a couple of logos, but some very nice sticker markings. Then you've got these soft clear parts you're going to use in and around on the kit. Some of them, just remember one side is correct because it's more iridescent, so make sure you're paying attention to that in the manual. we got SB8 here for our clear pink beam saber effect parts. Runner A here going to be some of our white armor pieces. This runner is specifically marked for the Gundam Nadle. As you can see, our pilot figures are also molded here on this runner. Runner B here is going to be some of our gray inner frame pieces. And runner C is some more of our inner frame. We've got two of these runners. The labels on runners B and C are going to be MG100 scale GN frames. These are going to be recycled from recent GN Master Grades kits. Runner D here is some more white armor pieces. we got two of these. Runner E1 is some more white armor pieces there, and E2 is going to be a copy of the runner minus the one part there at the top. Runner F1 and F2 are going to be some clear parts in clear green and plain clear. Runner G1 here is going to be in yellow, and runner G2 is going to be a copy of a portion of that runner. Runner H1 is going to be some more inner frame parts. These are going to be new parts specifically for this kit, and there's runner H2 as well. Runner I1 here is going to be in a little bit softer plastic. This is obviously for the cords coming out around the Nadle's head. Good that these are in a softer plastic in this case just because with how thin those strands are you're not going to want those to break. Runner J1 a few more pieces here in red. Runner J2 is our clear pink effect part there for the Nadalize beam rifle. And Runner K is a three color runner both in that dark almost black kind of color red and white. This runner is specifically marked for the Gundam Virtue. Runners L1 and L2 are in a dark navy color. 
Runner M1 is in that very dark, almost black color, and the same with Runner M2. Runner N is some more inner frame parts. This is basically going to be the interior of the Virtue's armor pieces. That's continued on to Runner O1 here as well, and we have Runner O2 here in that same gray color. Runner P is some more gray pieces, mostly here for the weapons, looks like. Runner Q, some more white armor pieces for the Virtue. And that is everything, guys. So as you can see, there's a ton of parts because you're basically building like a master grade and a half with this. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all put together and we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, so here it is, the incredible bulk all put together. And yeah, what else can we say about it except for it's very large and very heavy. And as much as you would think that that should make it a bit of a brick as far as just getting it to standing, just plop it down and it'll stand up, I have actually found the ankles to be a little bit wobbly. Either that or just like the way that the toe band works in there, it's just kind of, you have to have the feet planted just right to get it to be kind of pretty solid without worrying about it kind of tipping one way or the other. But you do of course have an action base adapter included and you might want to throw this up on an action base to really unlock its full potential just because with it being as bulky as it is, you are actually able to do some really nice posing with this but you are going to want to throw it up on an action base. Unfortunately it's not included but we have a bunch of other accessories, let's go ahead and get through those right now. Starting off with these simple hands like with the recent Master Grade 00 kits, they're just going to be the type where you swap out the fingers, the thumb is on a ball joint. We've got closed fists, as well as fingers for holding beam sabers and trigger finger hands for holding beam rifles, as well as just regular open extended fingers for open hands. As I mentioned, you also have your action base adapter here, which will plug up underneath the skirt section. We have our two different standing pilot figures included with this, both are on a little base, one in the dress, one in the pilot suit. You've got all your hair pieces, which you'll use for when you're transforming into the Nadle couple of standard 00 style beam sabers for that as well. These just have your clear pink blades and these are going to have a little hole in the handle there for plugging into your fingers for holding the beam sabers. You got your separate solar reactor which as far as I know you can't really do anything particularly with that but you've got that as a separate one that you can keep out on its own. Maybe put in like a little diorama or something I guess. For the Nedley you've got its GN shield and GN beam rifle which I love. I really really love the design of these weapons for the Nadle, which is one reason why I kind of prefer the Nadle over the Virtue really, and that's probably how I'll end up displaying mine, but Beam Rifle does have a clear green part in there for the camera for that, but with it being clear dark green, it basically looks black at this point, so I would recommend painting some silver up inside that or something. The handle on the side here will lift out like so. The shield as well is another design that I love about the Nadle, this just plugs onto the side of the arm, and it rotates, and it's on a little ball joint there a little bit. But again, really love the design of this and quite long and it's really cool that was included. Another accessory that you have included for the beam rifle is the beam saber extension part of that. Just be able to use this as a melee weapon as well and it's really cool how that, that catches the light as you can see like the mobile suit behind there. So depending on how you have this in your display, it makes for a really cool effect there with that clear pink, but it looks very nice. But of course the massive GN bazooka is going to be the star of the show here for the Virtue. So this has the handles which will fold out to the side like that. That also has a clear green part in there for the camera, but it's also again just going to be black basically. It's a little bit stiff, but be careful with it. This bottom part will extend down like that to open that up. And then you can pull out these yellow parts here on the inside. And they do somewhat lock into place, but be careful because I feel like it is kind of easy to just let that slide back into there. And then the handles on the back, once you fold them out, they can slide back as well for its fully extended form like that, which is very impressive, of course. So that looks really cool. And then we have a lot to go over with the actual kit itself here. The GN cannons on the backpack can be rotated up and turned forward and you can extend the barrel of those without popping this part here off the front of the chest. There's a little tab up underneath here to help you to kind of extend those, so you pull that out, and there's the extended barrels on those. Those look very cool, and these can also be disattached for when you're gonna wanna use them with the Nadle to be handheld weapons. Once again, there's a little tab on here used to just pop out the handle, and they're just gonna be handheld weapons that the Nadle is gonna use. Now, how well the Nadle can really hold on to these, because they are pretty big, not necessarily all that heavy. They are pretty good size. We'll see how well the Nadle holds on to those once we do that transformation here in a little bit. The other cool thing, of course, that you can do with these is pop this out to expose that little bit of yellow in there, which is another nice little detail. I did put a couple of the stickers on here, basically just to show you guys how the stickers are gonna look. So against the dark plastic, it looks kind of okay, but you can still see the outline of the sticker. Whereas on a white plastic, like here on the shoulder, you're not seeing the outline of the sticker quite as much, but it's going over some detail there. So you might want to, if you're gonna be doing panel lining, you need to like cut the sticker, 
there and do your panel lining and all that. It's a little bit more complicated. But like I was saying here on the side of the leg, you can also pop out these sections. And I find it's kind of hard to do without pulling this entire section off. So maybe just take that off, extend this out like that. Once again, to expose that cool yellow detail inside there and then gently pop it back on there without pressing that back in. I'm sorry guys, one real quick edit I'll make to what I was saying earlier about the GM Bazooka. When it's just in this form, not the extended form, this main handle is actually meant to plug up in the center there. And that's gonna be the one you're gonna wanna hold on to when it's just a single handed grip. It's only when you want the double handed grip that you extend them out and then pull that back. And that's when you're gonna take this from the bottom and plug it onto the side here. So that there's one on each side and then pull it back like that. So anyway. Normally, the handle should be there in the center like so. Now, just go over some of the articulation and details of the main kit here as the Virtue, anyway. Articulation of the head upwards is going to be a little bit limited by this big piece of armor there on the back of the head. The GM drives, once again, look nice when you can catch the reflection of that mirror sticker underneath the dark clear here on the side of the head and the forearms right there. A lot of really nice color separation around here with the gray and yellow parts poking out and then like the yellow parts up here in the chest. That's all pretty much expected though, shouldn't be too surprised about any of that. This part here on the front of the chest which came off earlier does have a bit of articulation that folds up like that. You can put an LED inside and that will light up this section right here if you want to, but I've just gone ahead and left that out for right now. The eyes and head camera are also in clear green, but I've gone ahead and used the stickers on those just so that those are more visible, again, without anything lighting them up or without some silver paint or something up behind there. They're not gonna be all that noticeable. Despite having as much bulk as it has, the rest of the arms and legs articulation is pretty good. It's really only kind of in the core section here that you don't really have any forward and back bend side to side or even rotation, doesn't even rotate all that much just because I think that's just to help kind of deal with the weight of it. You can also fold this little bit down right there and that's where your cockpit is going to be right inside there and it's gonna be hard to see but your seated pilot figure is up inside there. But the shoulder armor will move up and down. You can bring the arms up pretty high to about there. Got some normal rotation there at the base of the bicep. A double joint in the elbow to give you a pretty full bend, more than 90 degrees but not more full than that unfortunately. The wrist can turn, bend, and rotate forward and back, which is nice. These front skirts can move individually and you have separate gray pieces for the backing of those. That's nice. These side skirts aren't actually side skirts. They're actually attached onto the back skirt. So they're just kind of wrapped around from the back skirt, but you can ro rotate those, move them out of the way. This back skirt is just this massive chunk, which is connected right onto there. So nothing really moves with that. The leg, if you bend the knee out of the way, you can get the leg up pretty far to the front like that is the lower part of the leg is just this massive chunk here and you can bend that where the thigh is just kind of normal size up inside there but again you can get about a 90 degree bend of that similar like with the elbow this front little bit of armor here on the front can move up and down the foot can move back and that will move this piece of armor back with it when that moves you can see that moves like that the foot will go forward and back side to side pretty well like that and you do have a little bit of toe bend there as well up underneath the feet Nice full detail there. All right, so now just trying out a couple of poses here before we transform it into the NAD layer. Obviously not gonna have a, any trouble with the beam sabers. Those are gonna be just fine, of course, as you might expect, but if you wanna go for the heavy weaponry, the giant beam cannon does give you a little bit of weight issues depending on how you wanna hold it. Obviously it's gonna be a lot of weight on the wrists, basically. The shoulders, the elbows, those are all fine for holding up the weight. And the hand connections to the handles of the cannon is fine. It's only in the wrist that you might experience a little bit of sag, so you kind of have to trick it in ways to pose it so that you can balance the weight a little bit better. That said, for how big that weapon is, the fact that the trouble posing it is, you know, relatively small, I think that's a pretty good feat. So Ben, I did a pretty good job. The only real way that they could have fought that more would be to make like a fixed wrist, which I think they probably could have and should have done. That would have been the better way to go with this. That would limit your articulation, but I don't know, maybe make it as like an option part, something you can put in a, a dummy wrist joint that you can put in that's just fixed, that doesn't have the articulation. You can just swap it out for the articulated one if you wanted. Something like that I think probably would have been a better option. Now how it's built according to the manual is to build it as the Nadley and then you transform it into the Virtue, but to transform it back into the Nadley, all it is, is essentially just removing all the armor. So like, for example, all these armor pieces all just come off pretty easily, like here on the forearm. And most of the pieces do have this nice kind of inner frame piece on the inside of the armor, so if you did want to make some kind of display for this, like the armor is all coming off, then you can display it in a way that you can still have all this full detail on the inside of there, which does look really cool.
here it is all stripped down looking very cool I do really love the look of the Nedley just because it's very like a skeletal and especially compared to the virtue I mean seeing that one and then seeing this one right after that I mean it just looks so thin and bare bones and I mean that's how it's supposed to look right the hair effect parts look very cool depending on how you want to pose it because they do inhibit the articulation of the head a little bit there is a little bit of movement in them but not really that much they are softer plastic which is nice and again I do really love the shield and beam rifle of the Nedley and all the weapons that you have for the virtue you can use with the Nedley as well we'll try that out here in a second but without all that armor it does free up some of the articulation so I do just want to quickly go over that a little bit again here so you can see the difference with the Nedley so you can move the head up and down. There's no articulation with these parts. Two of them plug up into the neck and two of them plug into the face so you can get movement there. This set here in the back does move a little bit up and down so you have a little bit of movement with that. So if you want to move the head back, you can get that back a little bit or move the head forward then you can then bend them down so they look like they're resting naturally over the GN drive there at the back. Bending the head side to side will also kind of break the illusion a little bit that those are again nat resting naturally. but. It's fine overall. The shoulder armor, very small, but that moves up. You can bring the arm up to just about the same as you could before. But what you gain here uh, compared to with the full armor of the Virtue on there is you have more of an elbow bend than we did before. The wrist joint is all going to be the same and everything like that. We also have more articulation in the stomach section, whereas the articulation of the stomach section was basically locked by these sets of armor pieces that fit around there. But now that those are off, we have some side to side movement, also some forward and back movement here in the stomach section. And you can also rotate that, of course, which we couldn't do when all the armor was on there. And then without any front and back skirting armor, you can have full movement of the legs forward and back. No issues there. The whole hip section actually drops down. As you can see, we just saw there. The knee, you're gonna have a much more full knee bend here, basically giving you almost an entirely 180 degree bend there with that, and nice separation of the knee armor there. You have this tiny little bit of, not gonna say ankle armor, but this tiny little piece here at the ankle that does move forward and back. Same articulation here at the foot, basically toe, side to side movement there, up and down movement with that up underneath the foot, which is kind of more like a little boot at this point. The yeah, one thing that I really like about this design is how you're seeing all this gray coming out between. It's not just like solid white. There's lots of gray bits of frame that are poking out. And then of course these uh, GN cables that you can see at the front of the legs and the back of the elbows there. So of course with that really light armor look and the added articulation, you're able to achieve a wider range of mobility for doing some more dynamic posing, which is another really cool thing to enjoy about the Nadle here. As far as just using its different weapons and everything, everything works pretty well, even with using the massive GN cannons. You really don't have much weight issue, and again, you're just having the same problem just kind of with the wrist, and that's about it. It's a little bit tricky to get the hands attached into the separate GN cannons, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty much not a real problem. So I gotta say, Bandai did a really good job on this kit, and I imagine it was a challenging kit to do, a Master Grade like this that kind of has these two forms. I guess they did recently, not too long ago, have the Master Grade Faz Verka, which is a similar type of thing, right? But that was also a fantastic kit, and this one is a really nice addition to the Master Grade 00 lineup. Now, do I think they're gonna come up with a Exia 2.0 next, or maybe do some of like the Season 2? main uh, mobile suits from the series. I'm not too sure where they might go next with the Master Grade 00 line or they might take a break from it for a while. We'll just have to see. But what are your guys' thoughts? What do you think about this kit? Which form do you prefer, the Nadler or the Virtue? Let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, if you're looking for this kit or any other Master Grades or any other Gunpla, of course, you can check out what we've got there in stock at USA Gundam Store. The link and the coupon code are both down in the video description for you guys to use. So check that out and utilize that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you'd like to also like the video or subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated but just love hearing from you guys in the comments thank you all so much for the support till next time hope you're all having a great day i'll see you guys later bye bye